Hey everybody, we are back with another episode of Can't Stop Snapping, the official podcast of MarvelSnapZone.com. Uh, we have some interesting news that we're going to be talking about today, some tweets that have gone out, things that have been discussed in the Discord. So we're anticipating some big things next week, and we're going to be talking about that as well as our normal breakdown of the latest card and the latest location in Marvel Snap. Uh, today I'm joined by a first-time guest on the podcast, very excited to have him on, and that is Ordinary Harry. Harry, thanks for Hello. being here. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, very, very appreciative to have you here. Uh, we're back to working, you know, between different time zones. Love to have people that are far away, and I appreciate you kind of. I'm here kind of earlier in the day. It's late for you. Appreciate you jumping on. Um, oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's right after my my usual stream, so couldn't be more perfect timing, to be honest. Well, well glad glad to hear that. Um, as always, we'd like to just give you a second just to kind of introduce yourself to the guests briefly, just a little bit about your background, how long you've been uh, creating content, and uh, then we'll dive into our topics. Uh, yeah, so I'm Ordinary Hari. I've been creating Marvel Snap content mostly on Twitch, I would say, almost exclusively uh, for eight months now or something. I think I, I, think I started uh, 17th of July, so... It's been it's been like um, exactly eight or nine months. I, I I can't I can't I can't math it now. Eight, eight. Uh, yep, eight. That would be eight this month. Yeah. So it's been eight months only, and it's been an amazing experience. Uh, the channel has grown uh, very very nicely. Like I I feel blessed uh, with uh, the growth that the channel has had over the past uh, eight months. Um, uh, I won. I don't know. All right. I won a tourney, the first uh, tournament for uh, the Creator Clash tournament, that which was the first uh, LAN tournament for uh, Marvel Snap, which was very, very exciting. And I think that's about it. Nothing more to say. I stream daily on Twitch, as I said, and you can catch me there. Awesome. No, uh, I, I'm glad you brought it up because I wanted to just talk about it for just a second before we dive in. Uh, that was such a fun tournament, the, the, it was. Cre the Creator Clash. You were all together in person in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I think almost everybody was there. I think Coco was the only one not able to make it in person. Yes. And you won that tournament. And man, I, I, it really kind of came down there to the end. There was some there was some drama and really intense moments throughout the tournament. Uh, really could have gone either way. But you definitely pulled it out with uh, some awesome wins. Mm -hmm. And it, that was very enjoyable to watch. Yes. And uh, apparently that was what sparked the current... Um, meta that we're into because i won that tournament using a thanos deck obviously a very different thanos deck that the one uh, than the one everyone is using right now uh but still i think that the three four core cards that are uh kind of you know creating problems for everyone were present uh, in lockjaw um thanos obviously leech and quinjet uh yep. but yeah yeah, we will. We're definitely going to talk more about that, and uh, yeah, maybe the listeners will have a bone to pick with you afterwards. Maybe they'll no, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll dive into our topics and, and we'll get there as as we go along here. So, just diving in as we like to do, we will start out by talking about the latest card this week, uh, Master Mold. And I'll just start out by saying I think this is the one of the ones I've been most interested to see in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think Master Mold is a very unique card that synergizes potentially with some cards that don't see as much play. Um, but we'll talk about that. I don't want to take all the time here to talk. So I'll turn it over to you. What are your first impressions uh, of Master Mold and his ability and what it brings to the game? I think Master Mold is a strong card in a very specific uh, list. It it feels kind of like uh, Sauron to me. Sauron is very strong in... Um, in that ongoing uh, Shuri deck. But then the question is, is he worth the 6K tag, right? Because I think most people, when they're, when they're looking to, to spend that, much, uh, that many tokens on a card, um, they're also, they also want a, a card that's kind of versatile. It can fit in many different archetypes. And I don't think Master Mold is, Mold, Master Mold is, Mold is it. Um, it's definitely feels like a one trick pony, let's say it's one dimensional. It does what it does very well. Like it yep. puts two cards in your hand that you can't get rid of, right? You basically can't get rid of them unless you're playing this card or, or something to that effect. So 
the very obvious um, synergy here is with uh, Ronan yeah. that uh, a lot of people are not uh, playing. But yeah, I think that's that's where it starts and that's where it stops. I don't see Master Mold um, being put in too many decks. Maybe some kind of, I don't know, hand clock deck. That, But why would you not run Ronan in that one also, right? So I see Master Mold uh, being in various versions of Ronan decks until uh, the the final you know optimal list is the optimal list is finalized and that's where he's going to settle. Uh, I didn't buy this card because I think the other two cards that are coming later this month are more interesting and more versatile at the same time. Mm. And that's how I that's how I base my decisions. I don't buy all the cards. I just I buy the ones that I think are uh, interesting and versatile at the same time. Yeah, I, I would guess I hadn't really put it into words, but I, I think that's my approach as well. I've bought the uh, the three big bads that are kind of staying at that six thousand token cost for a while, right? And then I bought the cards that I feel are the most versatile, things like Shuri, things mm -hmm. like Bast. You know, people may argue with me that he's not that versatile, maybe comparatively, but I, I, you know, I bought Bast at the highest cost. Um, I, but I, I, Bast was my most, uh, the card I wanted the most when I yeah. when I first saw it, when the, first, the Series 5 cards first came out. And I, I did buy it immediately also, and I don't regret it. I love that card. Yeah. Oh, I, I love playing Mr. Negative, so Bast yeah, was a, yeah. Me too. <laughs> an, instant, an instant buy as well. Um, I think you bring up an interesting point, right? Uh, Master Mold does what he does very well and maybe opens up a new deck list that more people can play more frequently being kind of a Ronin, you know, built, you know, increase the hand size of your opponent. So things like Baron Mordo, um, uh, I'm blanking on names here. Uh, there's, there's a very nice Maximus, line. Maximus, Maximus. Yeah. Yep. There's a very nice line where you play Master Mold and on turn, either on one of the first four turns and then you Ronin. Uh, you also want to put, you also might want to put, um, uh, Oh my God! Now I'm blanking. the The good boy, the dog. Uh, oh, Cos uh, Cosmo. Cosmo, uh, yeah. To yes. pro to protect Ronan. So you play Ronan there, and then your turn six can be um, Mystique into Maximus. I think I think those three cards are going to be these four cards are going to be like the base of any any Ronan deck that you want to build. Yeah, uh, and and that's very hard to to defeat because it 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 it. It makes the same. It creates the same issue that the Shuri deck creates right now. If you play your power um, on a, a Cosmod location, your high power card on a Cosmod location, not only is it protected from all the tech cards like Shang Chi and etc., 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 but it's also protected by Arrow, because you're most probably going to be winning that deck, that location, uh, and your opponent can't Arrow that location because Cosmo is there, right? Yeah, it's so, a. Uh... I think this is this is going to be the mo the basic deck for uh, Master Mold, and I think it's going to be a good deck. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's going to be it's going to be probably in the in the top tiers of uh, of the meta. But yeah, it's still just one dimensional. It's the same thing, right? You're going to get bored of it very very fast. I think. Yeah. Once you start playing it. Yeah. It, it maybe. You know, some decks, it's kind of like you have that core package and maybe you can have a sub package of another win condition, but it may be difficult to have that in this situation because you're very mm -hmm. focused on kind of that one strategy, uh, kind of buffing up your Ronin and then getting that second Mystique out potentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think we won't see a ton of Master Mold playing. One, because he's still 6,000 tokens, not everybody's going to buy him at first, but give it another month or two. And uh, if things don't change too drastically with Ronin or anything, the abilities of, of those surrounding cards and they stay in their current state, I definitely could see this seeing a good amount of play on the ladder. I'd say I'd say give it two weeks. Uh, I'm positive. I have faith in. Um, I know this. I know we're going to discuss this uh, down the line, but I have faith that with the changes coming next week, uh, cards are going to be more accessible. Mm, so. Maybe after next week, uh, when cards are more accessible and then the meta shifts a little bit with uh, the balance patch, uh, Master Mold may prove to be one of the top uh, top decks. Like I, as I said, I, I don't I don't think it's weak uh, at all. I actually think it's very strong, but I ju I just think it's one dimensional, and that's why I'm not I, I haven't purchased the card yet. Yep, I think I'll be holding off as well. But um, 
I, just before we kind of jump into our next topic, uh, you just kind of this idea that, you know, but buy the cards that are multidimensional. Don't buy the cards that are one dimensional. Right. Um, yes. I, I saw somebody make the argument or kind of the statement, I guess I should say, maybe not an argument that uh, just at the cost with the current acquisition of tokens, this may change in the future, right? Acquisition may be a little easier in the future, but as things stand today, a time of recording, do you, would you agree with the statement that no card is truly worth it at 6,000 tokens? It's, it's better to wait because of the, the, time it takes to get tokens for like a free to play player to get cards it's just better to wait until they drop down so you can get more cards at a cheaper cost. definitely that's what i'm doing and i'm not i'm not i'm not a free to play player like i spent quite quite a bit of <clears throat> of money on the game and i still uh don't buy every card i wait for some for most of the cards to either drop down i only buy the ones that are that are really 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 um that i think are, are really really good and I would argue that the the cards, the two cards that two out of the three cards that will perpetually be series five cards in I mean Thanos and uh, Galactus are worth the six k yep. um, the six k tag because not only uh, can you build decks around them, but they're also kind of versatile. I know I know it sounds strange to say that for Galactus, but with the release of Nimrod. I think the Galactus deck is more versatile now than ever. Uh, there's so many different things you can do. And in a turn six, Galactus is not, um, you know, uh, out of the question. You can even play Galactus on turn six and surprise your opponent. Uh, so I think those two cards actually are w worth the 6K tag because, as I said, um, uh, they just create. They open up doors for you. Like you know, they create. They they give you the chance to to create so many different decks. I know Thanos is probably the most hated card at the moment uh, because it's in the meta. Uh, but I'm I'm positive that after the balance patch, um, he will, um, you know, he will still be strong. Just not, just not as oppressive as as he is not right now. Yeah. No. That that definitely makes sense. I appreciate you answering that question. Let's uh. Let's go ahead and transition here into our next topic, which is location. Um, we talked last week on the podcast about how there's been some changes to the duration of new locations, right? Because uh, there was always this mixed bag of sometimes new locations, everybody loves them. They're exciting. You can try new decks out. And sometimes they're a headache. Everybody hates them and can't wait until 48 hours passes. So mm -hmm. now we're down to 24 hours. And this is kind of our first time having a brand new location with only 24 hours. So... Um, we'll kind of see how people feel about that over time. But that all being said, uh, this location, Orcus Forge, when you play a card here, you get a Sentinel into your own hand. So kind of playing into this month's season pass, mm -hmm. days of the future past. Um, and also, I, to the, it also has a lot of synergy with the card that was released yesterday, right? Uh, yeah. Master Mold. Yep. So what are your general impressions? How are you feeling about this location and the design space they used? I love the, the the change with the 24 hours for the uh, featured locations because yep. I, I I thought that it was very, very fun uh, what they did with uh, the featured locations. Like it, it challenged you to build a different deck every week. But the problem was that the first day was, was a lot of fun because everyone was experimenting, trying different stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then by the second day, all of us, the content creators, uh, would you know? Would make videos like this is the best deck. Post on Reddit, uh, in, on your site or whatnot. Um, and then the meta would get figured out. And then on the second day, it was like, you know, a standard ladder day where you see the same deck all all, all, all the time. It was just a different deck designed for for the uh, for the feature location. So I love that they changed that and they 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 made it 24 hours it shows that they're listening to the community it's much much better and this this location is, was uh, very interesting i created a, a deck specifically for this location i included both um, devil dino and um, uh what's it ronan in that deck and it was a lot of fun and i actually won quite a bit with that deck so yeah i like the location i i think it was a location that you could you could either ignore if you if you wanted to uh, or build a deck around it. So I think I think it was a very, very nice uh, location overall. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, going kind of down that route, I think 
I think I like the locations that you can choose to like play into and, and build something strong, but also you can choose to ignore and still mm-hmm. potentially have fun and still win games. Uh, I've been playing some Patriot actually. I, I dusted off my Patriot deck after not playing Patriot for a while. And I've just been kind of playing around this location. Maybe I don't want to play into it directly because I don't want a bunch of sent- Sentinels in my hand, but then I'll launch my, uh, either my Dr. Doom, my Squirrel Girl, my Ultron, right? To load up that location at the end of the mm-hmm. game, right? And so in some ways, I've just been able to kind of play around and ignore it and still win the location in the end. Which I love nice. that you said uh, Patriot today because a guy playing Patriot took a lot of cubes from me today playing a card that is um, that is considered bad, just justifiably so, uh, Super Skrull. Mm. I was using Super Scroll in my deck today, and he was actually the star of the show, surprisingly. I've won, I won so many games with Super Scroll, and I also lost to that guy. Basically, it was, that, it was one person that was playing Patriot with Super Scroll, and they just stole the cubes from me every single <laughs> every single game because uh, they would steal my Ronan, my, my Dino, and uh, I would be sad. Yeah. that That is interesting, and I, I never think about... I don't think about Super Scroll as much as I should because I think Super Scroll honestly is the best with featured locations, right? He is. He's amazing. Where, where you can expect, okay, everybody's going to be playing Ronin or Devil Dino and I can just get a, a mix of those two, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I might have to try that out. Yeah, that uh, that does sound fun, but uh, maybe not fun to be on the receiving end of the person that's playing. Try that. it out. After, after we finish the podcast, maybe you can just uh, throw Super Scroll into your... Uh... Uh, into your Patriot deck, and uh, uh, honestly, it's very, very, very strong. People yeah. don't expect it. Yeah, uh, it's great in the mirrors, and then because everyone's playing Devil Dino and uh, Ronan, you just get a free Devil Dino and Ronan. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I'm definitely going to try that out after we're done recording. Um, but just I guess to kind of uh, finish off talking about the location, I, I like this location. My understanding from last week. Uh, with the change is that they're not going to necessarily be doing a new location every single week of the season. We saw that last week where instead Mm -hmm. of a new location, they just had a featured location that we already had had before. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, how do you feel about that? Because I like them shortening the time, but they kind of shorten the time and they're going to give us less new locations as frequently. I think um, my, my opinion about that um, is a, I don't know. This may be a bit long. So uh, well, I no, think that go ahead. They, they, they've, they've, they've kind of, I love that they're adding a new location every week, right? I love it. But I think it's getting a bit out of control because they made too many locations that are um, restrictive where they say you can't do play the card here. You can't play card. You can't play a six drop. You can't play your first card here. You you can't play any cards here. Like there's so many of those locations. And recently I've been getting them like two or three of them in the same game. And it just feels terrible. Yeah. Um, I think they've dug themselves into a hole and I think they need to make some changes in order to dig themselves out of that hole because they need to separate the locations um, according to restrictions, maybe like don't allow too many uh, locations that restrict gameplay completely. Like don't, can't play a card here, can't play a card there. It's 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 getting out of hand. I think they need to um, you know put those in a single category and then and then be like uh, you can have one maximum two of those locations in a game. Other than that, you know people need what people should be able to play the game, right? Um, yeah. So I think what they should do is have like a a location rotation, let's say, but keep releasing a location every a new location every week because it is a lot of fun. Uh, so, but so that it doesn't get out of control, uh, maybe have some kind of rotation, like split them into different categories and rotate uh, locations in that categories, so that all the locations are seen, but at the same time they're not active. All all the quote unquote bad locations are not active at the same time, right? Yeah, I think. I, I, I guess I, I should say I feel that at some point they will have to create some kind of rotation system. This is just my guess. Maybe. Because at some point, if they get to 150, 200 locations, I mean, being able to like play around that, like you say, like the RNG almost becomes too much of mm-hmm. like what possible locations you could have. Um, I don't obviously know what that would look like, but I think that may be necessary at some point with just continually adding more and more locations to the game, right? 
Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if it's just me and I'm unlucky, but it feels like three or four times a day, I'm going to be in a game where I literally can't play cards. And, and, it, and it's, getting, it's getting annoying, to be honest. It's, it's starting to be very, very annoying. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. But they, yeah. they definitely need to look into it. Maybe not, not act right away, but, you know, recognize that there's going to be an issue down the road and start preparing from, for, for it. Yeah. I feel. You're saying you don't enjoy the games where you get Death's Domain, Sanctum Centaurum, and then Plunder Castle all in a row? And No. <laughs> then you, you basically either retreat or you just sit there and hope somehow you can pull out one of those locations by the end. Uh, yeah. I, I think there's just some more work to be done there with locations. Like you say, I think that happens, obviously, the more you play, because I'm with you. It, it definitely happens to me when I'm playing more. I think I just get a higher probability of running into one of those scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that will only increase the more locations they add, right? Um, so time will tell what they do there, but hopefully they're, like you say, planning for the future, a future state. We need to make sure that this is still works with the current amount of locations. And if we add 100 more locations, that the systems still work mm -hmm. effectively, right? Well, awesome. Thank you for joining on that. Uh, before we jump into our next topic, we're going to do a quick uh, ad from our sponsor, and then we will jump back into our next topics. Hey all, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk to you about MarvelSnapZone.com. Marvel Snap Zone is a one-stop shop for everything Marvel Snap on the internet. They have new articles nearly every day that cover deck building, strategy, card breakdowns, etc. They have a great collection tracker tool and a deck list builder that works off of that collection tracker so that you can know what decks you can build with your current card collection. They have guides and deck lists for all level of players and all collection level of players. Make sure to go to MarvelSnapZone.com and check it out now. Okay, we are back. Um, so I do want to kind of set us up for our third topic today because it's kind of this bigger topic and you've already alluded to it a couple times and I have as well. And that is this kind of state of the meta as it stands today and how people are feeling about it, how we got here, how potentially we could avoid being here again in the future and, and what that could look like. So this tweet was sent out uh, about four or five days ago from time of recording. Uh, and it says Thanos and Shuri decks have both been more dominant than we'd like for the past few weeks. The patch we're releasing later this month has significant changes targeting both decks. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Harry, um, I think since we got this original tweet, we've seen in the Discord saying that they're anticipating releasing the patch next week. Yes. Uh, I think I think that's what we've heard uh, most recently. Uh, yeah, it makes sense because the previous, the patch is also going to include downgrades, right, for uh, Series yep. 4 and Series 5 cards. So uh, the previous downgrade was done on the 21st of uh, February. So next week, it's because February was, you know, has less days. Uh, next, next week is going to be exactly one month. Mm. Uh, and it's also going to be the 21st of uh, March. So it makes sense that uh, when they're doing the downgrades, since they're releasing a patch, and since they did announce at some point they, they, they can, they, that they were able to do uh, live uh, patching, but then they made a tweet and they said that, unfortunately, that tech is not online yet and it doesn't really work right now. So uh, we can only get balance uh, through patches and uh, understandably because it's a multi-platform game, uh, it takes some time for them to patch, to you know, prepare for a, for a patch. And I think that's the main reason why we're having the issues we're having with the stale meta, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I, I think that's a great, great point um, to bring up first because we're not here to obviously criticize or say, you know, second dinner is not doing their job. Uh, I talk about this a lot on the podcast. You know, I work in software and uh, sometimes it is just out of your control, whether you can get things out to the platforms you want to get them out to when you want them to get out. And, well, and, and the, customers can feel very frustrated. Exactly. The reason players, the players slash customers, if you want to call them that, are feeling frustrated is because 
there's a lot of them that don't understand that it, it is a procedure to balance the game. It takes, and that procedure takes about a month, as, as I've been informed. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't work in the field, so I don't really know. Uh, but if it takes a month, then it means that they need to be literal wizards in order to, um, you know, predict how the meta is going to look like a month from when they're deciding to make the changes. And because, uh, you know, the latest two patches kind of missed the mark. Uh, the one where, where they uh, completely gutted leader and made it an unplayable card, a lot of people are upset about that. Not because they didn't want leader nerfed, but because they wanted leader to be nerfed, but at the same time, uh, you know, playable in some way. Instead, they got a card that's literally dead. Like it's, it, it doesn't work. The, the card doesn't work. So that shook the confidence of the players. And then uh, the unfortunate timing of uh, Thanos buff coming right after I won the tournament and Thanos was just starting to dominate the meta. Uh, did create like the feeling that you know the devs don't know what they're doing but they do uh because as i explained when they were doing the buff they didn't know how the meta was gonna change and looking at the stats thanos himself was like never played and the and the deck wasn't didn't have that much of a win rate at the time when they were making the the patch so it was understandable but you know people are going to complain no matter what and, you know, uh, I think we need to give them time to set up uh, what they need to set up in order to be able to balance the game on the fly. And that's when we're, we're going to have um, the, 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 good, the good meta, the non-boring meta. Because until then, the same thing is going to happen over and over again. Like, they're going to release a patch after a couple of days, maybe a week. Maybe two weeks if we are lucky, the meta is going to be discovered and then everyone is going to be playing the best deck in the game. Everyone is going to be bored of it. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That's how, that's how modern card games are. The, that, the internet is here. Uh, information gets passed on very, very, very fast. And unfortunately, that's the reality of modern card games, whether we like it or not. It's not just Marvel Snap. It's every card game out there. Yeah, so... I definitely want to follow a few of the threads you just brought up. Um, you know, when we're looking at, you know, in my, in my day job, when we're looking at software and building software, right. Uh, sometimes somebody brings up an issue, but we definitely try to kind of prioritize or look at the severity of the issue. Right. Because we can't just, anytime somebody tells us there's something wrong, we can't just drop and fix it or change it immediately. Right. Because if we were doing that, we would never get anything new done and we wouldn't actually know if it's the best choice. Right. So we try to measure, you know, uh, what is the impact this has on our customers? And if it's if it's below a certain degree, then we say, OK, we will get this fixed as soon as we can. But it may take us a few days, a week so that we can solve it in the right way and give you the best experience long term. Uh, if there's that extreme where our customers literally cannot perform the functions they need to and our software does not work, then we do something like a hot fix, right, where we say, mm -hmm. no, we are going to get this out today. We're going to test it as best as we can. Maybe we're going to test it a little bit less because we don't have as much time, but we're going to get this out ASAP, right? Um, and I think that's kind of the approach you, you want to take because like you said, they, they added the ability to patch on the fly cards. Sounds like that's not currently working, but even if when it is, I don't know that we want like anytime somebody in the community starts to make a fuss about something not being fun or, or hard to play against, we don't want them to change it immediately, right? I don't uh, think that's what they're doing, though. Yeah, no, and, and, I, and I agree. I don't think they are doing it. I think some people probably, there are those people that maybe would wish that happens, right? But I think that would be a, a, a worse game experience, right? Um, I think that really is there for if there's ever a moment where, like, they look at the stats and it's like, if you don't have this one card and you're only, if you're not playing this one card, you literally can't win the game kind of a scenario, where like it's broken essentially like truly broken the game can't be enjoyed or played that's what that is for but with these things where they maybe need to rework a card try to balance it uh, and make it still playable like that ne that needs to take time to go through some iterations and test it out and see how it plays with other cards like that can't be done in a day right so I i'm agreeing with you i'm just uh yeah I you're I explaining think... you're explaining the you know uh the, the what happens Behind the, the scenes, right? Behind yeah. the... Behind the curtain. Know, the curtain. The curtain, yeah. Yeah. 
so I think, like you say, I think they are doing a good job. It's just uh, we play the game every day and they're working on the game every day. And uh, sometimes these things take time. Um, so kind of going from there, uh, one of the things you and me were talking about beforehand and kind of where we wanted to talk about with this with is, um, do you think there's anything slightly different um, that they could do or or with cadence or with the amount of cards they change per patch, anything to just maybe make this feel a little bit better for users than in the current state, if that makes sense. Like, um, and I, I maybe, I'm sorry, I just want to get a little bit more context. I, I know there's sometimes in the last couple of patches, it's like we're surprised by the amount of cards low or high that are changed. Right. Um, or things like that, or the frequency of the patches. So just curious your thoughts on that. Uh, well, a lot of people seem to be forgetting that Secondary is not like a, this colossal company with massive experience in video games. It's a very new company. We need to cut them some slack. Uh, they're trying that. I can tell you 100% that the people that are working, uh, I've met a few of them on the game, love the game. They play the game every day. They want the game to, to do well. They want the game to be balanced. Um, they want the people. They want people to enjoy the game. Um, as much as they enjoy making it. And um, I think, as I said before, the nature of the beast is such right now with the, how fast information is transferred that we're going to have the same situation every balance patch. Uh, what I would like them to do is, but they're doing it to some extent already, is you know bring cards that are underused, you know, bring them up. Uh, but they are doing it. Uh, they've done it almost every patch where they they'll, they'll they'll pick like cards that people aren't using, and they'll buff them a little bit, and then you know see from from there. Uh, unfortunately, the buffs that they did last time to so many cards, um, for example, the Guardian of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy buffs didn't do anything. Uh, yeah. Those cards are still never played. So maybe they need to do a bit more. Maybe some more uh, drastic changes to. Um, underused cards, just so you know, we get some fresh uh, archetypes, fresh cards into the meta, and it feels more exciting. Uh, but until they have the chance to balance on on the fly, we're never going to see a truly balanced uh, uh, meta ever. Um, I, in my in my head, uh, when they say balance on the on the fly, I imagine that once they start seeing a card that's an outlier, they're not going to kill the card. They're gonna they're probably gonna do like remove like one stat from the card. Yep. See how see how the meta uh, reacts and then go from there, right? I, I that's how I imagine the on the fly balancing, like no nothing drastic. And then uh, yeah, and I, then agree. I agree. There'll still be those frequent patches where they make a bunch of changes at the same time to keep the game fresh. That's how that's how modern games are. Every 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 game, no matter what genre, uh like League of Legends, um Valorant, even I, I don't, I don't really play that game. Like all the games, that's how that's how they they move right now with uh, frequent balance patches to keep the game uh, to the games fresh because you know people play them f too much. <laughs> yeah, and they get bored very fast. No, yeah, in the modern the modern gaming world, right? When we were kids playing video games, it, it was very different, right? Because you only had one game; it was never going to change, and uh, I uh, didn't have the internet, like you say, to kind of figure out how to speed run a game or how to mm -hmm. kind of maximize things. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I 100% agree. That's how I would imagine the patch on the fly, right? Maybe there's still kind of that same cadence of about one big patch a month. But mm -hmm. maybe in the middle there, you know, two weeks between, there is, you know, three or four cards that are brought up, right? Maybe one extra stat, one extra small change to kind of help things or, you know, one or two cards are brought down by a power. Those things to just kind of do some slide adjustments. Uh, you, you probably wouldn't be like reworking a full card with one of those uh, patches on the fly, mm -hmm. but it would give that shake up, like you say, kind of that one to two weeks where people start to figure out a meta. Okay, two weeks have gone by. And now we're going to give you just a little bit more to try to balance things out and to try some new things out. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds great to me. I, I would personally love that. And I always say this on episodes. We all know Second Dinner is watching this podcast right now and they're, we, we'd like to imagine they're in a little room with their, their notepads and they're taking some notes on what we're talking about uh, and, and they're doing. But no, I, I know that they're really good at listening and I know people are sharing similar thoughts online. And so uh, I think they I think they have a good 
roadmap but of how they can how they if, can do this. If, if if they are listening right now, uh, there's one thing I would I, I would want to say: don't listen too much. <laughs> do your own thing. Like uh, I've seen way too many games get ruined by trying to please. Uh, the you know the vocal minority that just likes to complain like don't listen too much you know what you're doing you've done a great job so far keep doing what you're doing like uh, the, the complaints we have are very 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 minor um, all in all the game is amazing uh, and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure there's a bright future ahead yeah and that is a that is a great thing to bring bring back into perspective because we have lots of listeners to the podcast who are going to be in varying degrees of collection level right and unlocking cards playing against different car, uh, players with different card sets, right? And I think there's a lot to be said about the work they've done over time to make kind of that journey from collection level one to two to three. Um, I'm not saying it's perfect. Yeah, there's 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 a black spot in that journey. Uh, there's that collection level um, between 600 and around 1,500, around 1,800 where the, the the experience is is the, is, the beginning of pool three right yeah um, the beginning of pool three is just it's it's a bad experience for everyone i i i i experienced that with uh you know a new account i created just to have fun and i just stopped playing on that account because it honestly it feels terrible yeah uh, at that point they and the thing is that they've they've acknowledged that they've yeah. said you know yeah we know we know that the experience is not the best there and uh they said that they're, they're going to work on it so i i waiting for them to to make the the right choices and the right changes in that aspect. Yeah, and that's very fair. What I wanted to kind of bring that to is that uh, often, like you're saying, kind of this vocal minority is the content creators who are playing at the, you know, at the highest level of ranking with a full collection and the experience for them can be very different than what it is for somebody who's only been playing the, the game for a month or two, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to keep in mind, uh, yeah, maybe that's what we're hearing the most about on Twitter, but that doesn't mean that's the only thing they have to look at and yes, work on, right? Definitely. Uh, so that that hopefully adds a little bit more empathy for all of us that uh, they're working on, you know, making the the top of, the highest level experience the best it can be. But they also want to work on the whole experience throughout the game. I'm actually very very excited with the latest. I don't know if it was a tweet or Discord message uh, where they listed. Uh, what's going to be in this patch? And I think everything that they listed hit the mark. And also, there was a um, there was a, a Discord message where they um, let me find it right here, real, real quick, you, you, uh, so I can read it to you. Oh my god! Uh, here we are. Uh, so someone asked them uh, if they have anything fun to share about the future, right? And then uh, what they said there made me very, very excited. So Stefan said between what they're working on right now is between ranked mode changes, which is what a lot of people want, token and token shop changes, yeah, uh, a new competitive mode, and a full PC release. Like all those things uh, hit the nail on the head. That's, 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 that's what we want, right? We want mm -hmm. a new competitive mode, uh, not just the ladder. We want the PC release so the game can look beautiful when we're streaming it and be, you know, more user friendly. And then the token and token shop changes. It's been a long time coming. Uh, so, yeah, I think they, 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 they are aware of the issues and they're working on them very, very hard. And uh, we just need to give them time. Yeah. Yeah, you say that and I can just, uh, yeah, I can feel the excitement in myself, right? I'm like, yeah, that all does sound exactly like what I want. So, uh, yes. So that is good. Uh, second dinner, uh, I've said this before, you know, they've earned my trust as a game developer. Uh, like all developers of software, they're not going to be perfect. There's going to be missteps, but they've shown that they can quickly adapt, uh, be agile mindset, uh, and kind of uh, continue on the right path every time, right? Um, it just takes time, and that's the reality. So uh, appreciate you kind of breaking down this topic with me. I know that... Uh, Next week, we're going to have a ton to talk about with the patch. Like, we'll mm -hmm. actually see what is all there and how we're feeling about it. But I think it's, you know, important to take a step back and kind of think about the kind of the current state of the game and, and where we are right now before we see where we're at tomorrow. So uh, really appreciate you being on, uh, Harry. We're, we're just about out of time. But I just want to give you one more chance uh, to just give a shout out about where people can find you online, what are your ads, and how can they best support the content that you're putting out? Well, basically, it's at Ordinary Harry uh, on every platform. Uh, I'm on um, YouTube, 
on uh, uh, Twitter and on Twitch. That's where I mostly do my content uh, daily. I try to, you know, go live every day. Maybe I'll take a, a, a break, a day off every 15 days or something. So almost every day you're going to find me at uh, Twitch TV Ordinary Harry, uh, streaming Marvel Snap and uh, having fun and doing crazy, wacky things that, uh, you know, might seem impossible, but we try to make them possible. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you it. for having me. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. No problem. Uh, and listeners, thank you for listening, and we will catch you in the next episode. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast written, recorded, produced, and hosted by Michael Thurman. Thanks for listening. Thank you.